All right, for this lesson, 4.2, you need to be on page 166 in your textbook. And if you don't already have your journal out and ready, plus a piece of paper out and ready, pause my video and go get those. And turn to page 166. If you have not already written the key idea and the vocab words, you might also pause my video and write those in your math journal as well. So let's go over these. Percent of change. The percent of change is the percent that a quantity changes from the original amount. You can see here they've written it in a nice little formula. Percent of change equals the amount of change divided by the original amount. This can be either an increase or a decrease. Okay, You do need to make sure you understand how this formula works. This is how you can calculate in the real world um, the taxes on things like when you go out to eat or uh, you could calculate a discount if the store is having a big sale. The, this is the formula you can use to do that. So specifically to percents of increase and decrease, when the original amount increases, the percent of change is called the percent of increase. So the percent of increase, you take the new amount, you subtract whatever the original amount was, and always divide by the original amount. This will tell you the percent that that amount increased by. So this is a good way to... When they mark up clothing, when clothing stores mark up their prices, this is how they do the math. When the original amount decreases, the percent of change is called the percent of decrease. And again, um, you always divide by the original amount, but you see here the difference is you're going to put the original amount first and subtract the new amount and then divide by the original amount. So you just reverse what you did on the percent of increase. This will show you how much that cost or price or whatever it is decreased by. Okay, so let's try one. All right, in your journals, example one. For this example, we are going to be finding the percent of increase. So, the table shows the number of hours you spent online last weekend. <laughs> That's funny. You guys are going to be spending a lot more hours this week than you are normally. Anyhow, what is the percent of change in your online time from Saturday to Sunday? The number of hours on Sunday is greater than the number of hours on Saturday, so the percent of change is definitely going to be a percent of increase. Because you can see here we had 2 hours and there we had 4.5. So remember our formula. I'm going to write it here. Percent, and I'm going to do it my shorthand. Percent of increase, because this is what we're trying to find, equals, it's the new amount minus the original divided by what? The original. So let's do that. So we're trying to find our answer here. So we say equals my new amount would be what was the amount on Sunday. So you're going to say 4.5. The original amount of hours I spent was 2 and divide it by the original amount of hours. Okay, well, 4.5 minus 2 would give you 2.5 divided by 2. Well, you can use a calculator, or you can do the longhand. 2.5 divided by 2 is going to give you 1.25. The last thing you need to do is convert this to a percentage. So we're going to move the decimal twice to the right to change it to percent. So you're going to get 125%. So the percent of increase was 125%. So on Sunday, you spent 125% more time on the internet than you did on Saturday. Good. All right, grab a piece of paper. We're going to do the on your own. On your own number one. 
If at any point this is going too fast for you, please pause the video. For these, number one and number two, you're going to find the percent of change round to the nearest, nearest tenth of a percent. So tenth means two decimal places, uh, if necessary. So number one, we are looking at 10 inches change to 25 inches. Okay, this is increase or decrease. What's the original amount compared to the new amount? Well, 10 is definitely smaller than 25, so this is gonna be an increase. Woo, my marker, increase, there we go. Okay, you don't have to write that, but if it helps you right now, you can. So percent of increase, remember, I'm gonna take the new amount Subtract the original amount, divide it by the original amount. So 25 minus 10 would be 15 divided by 10. It's going to give you what decimal? 1.5. Okay, to make that a percent, you move the decimal two times to the right. So you're going to get 150%. And you do need to say increase, I'm sorry. 150% increase. If you already wrote it up here, I wouldn't, wouldn't make you rewrite it. But So it's 150% increase. Good. Um, now, you notice that we got at 1.5, so we didn't have to uh, round to 10th. Oh, 10th is one decimal place. I told you two earlier. Whoops. That's hundredths. Tenth is one decimal place. But anyways, this one was rounded to one decimal place already, so we didn't have to round that one. All right, let's look at number two. I'm going to see if I can squeeze it on here. We're going from 57 people to 65 people. Is this an increase or a decrease? 57 is definitely smaller than 65, so it is an increase. So, when you're doing an increase, it's the new amount subtracted by the original amount divided by the original amount. Okay, so 65 minus 57 would be 8 divided by 57. So you can use a calculator for that, and you get 0 0.14. It, it goes further, but 0 0.1403, whatever. You can just go to two decimal places. Because then we're going to change this to a percent. So we move the decimal twice, and it's approximately 14 well, and they want you to round it to one decimal place, so the next number here is zero, so you're going to say 14.0% because it does go further than that. The next number is three, but three makes the zero stay zero, so 14.0%, and it is approximately. And then was this an increase or a decrease? Increase. Good. All right, that was on your number one and two. Turn my page. All right, we're going to look at example two. Put them in your journals. We have a chart here about softball and home runs per season. So the bar graph shows a softball player's home run totals. What was the percent of change from 2007 to 2008? So we really just need to focus on 2007 and 2008. We don't really need to care about 2005 or 6. The number of home runs from 2007, how many were there in 2007? 28 and there was 20 in 2008. So from 2007 to 2008, did we increase 
or decrease? If you said decrease, you are correct because he had originally 28 and now he only made 20 in 2008. So you need to use your percent of decrease formula, which is remember the original amount minus the new amount divided by the original. So original amount would be 28 minus the new amount, which was 20, divided by the original amount, which was 28. So 28 minus 20 would be give you 8 divided by 28. So this is where you can use your calculator. You're going to get 0.286. Okay, this is rounded to three decimal places. And then you move the decimal twice, you get 28.6%. Make sure you write decrease if you did not already write it somewhere. This is a 28% decrease. So this softball player hit 28% less home runs the, set the following year from 2007. All right, so grab your piece of paper. I'm going to squeeze it in here. Number three for on your own. What was the percent of change from 2005 to 2006? 2005 to 2006, that would be another decrease so again, I'm going to put 18 minus 10 divided by 18. Well, 18 minus 10 would be 8 divided by 18. So here, grab your calculator. 8 divided by 18. I could do it longhand, but it would take a while. Well, a little while. So 0.44 rounds to 0.44. Oh, no, it doesn't round up. It's just 4-4 four, four forever. So you go to 3, move the decimal twice, you're going to get 44.4% decrease. I'm going to run out of space, so I'm going to put, it looks like December. <laughs> decrease. I'm going to squeeze it. Made it. All right. So that's on your own number 3. 44.4% decrease. Good. I wish I could ask you if you had any questions, but you'll just have to chat if you do or post on my YouTube, that's fine too. All right, let's look at example three. Put this in your journals. Last example. You have 250 songs on your MP3 player. So I'm gonna say 250 songs on my MP3 player. You delete 20% of the songs. How many songs are left? So what we're trying to find here is the amount of decrease. Well, deleting is decreasing. So I'm going to find 20% of 250 songs. What did I just say there? 20% of 250 songs, because that's how many we're deleting. What does the word of mean when in um, mathematical terms? Multiplication. So I'm going to do 20%, which is 0.2 times 250. So if you multiply 0 0.2 times 250, you'll get 50. So the decrease, let's see, what was the question they're asking? How many songs are left? So we decreased it by 50, so now I take... 250 minus 50, and there are 200 songs left. Make sure you label songs left. So this is my final answer. Always reread the question. In this example, it's most multiple choice, which the answer was C, but I'll accept just the answer there. Good, okay. So the on your own number four pertains to this, so I'm going to read it before I change screens here. What if, after deleting the 50 songs in example three, you add 10% more songs? How many songs are on the MP3 player? Okay, so how many current songs do we have? 
200. We have 200 songs. That's what we need to know. So I currently have 200 songs. And I'm going to add 10%. Okay, so I need to find 10% of 200. So you hear it again. 10% of 200. So again, that's 0 0.1, moving the decimal, times 200. Okay, well, what's 0 0.1 times 200? 20. Okay, and I wanted to know what's the total number after I added the 10%. So I take the percent I found and add it to the original, so I get 200 plus 20 equals 220 songs. Easy peasy. All right. So there's the on your own and the examples out of your textbook. Uh, let's see, you're on page 160, and you're probably on page 168. Oh, I have the book right here. Page 168 to 169. Whoops, that should be a 9. Um, I want you to do the practice and problem solving numbers... 4 through 20 all, and then 34 through 38 all. Those are a little bit of a review. Okay? Uh, write these down on a piece of paper. You can continue on the same piece of paper that you wrote the on your own questions. And then what I'd like you to do, if you can, is submit this in right here on Google Docs in this assignment. And the way you do that is you take your page and if it's more than one page you're going to take more than one picture but you take a nice clean sharp picture of each side of your homework and then you attach them uh, right here on this assignment in Google Docs. If you can't do that then staple them and you'll turn them in every Tuesday at the drop off.